Um, yeah, so I have the pleasure to be the last speaker of today. Um, so yeah, I'm Philip. I do my PhD in Bristol, and um, yeah, I just got into my fourth year, so I um, um, would like to present you the um, work we have done there. Um, I work there together with uh, my both um, supervisors, James and Mike, on seismic anisotropy and deforming salt bodies. And um, yeah, before I, I start, I would like to um, say thanks to um, some people who helped us also with this work, um, Andrea and, and Chris, who gave us very um, valuable comments on the um, uh, things we have done. And also um, Martin and, and Dan from Rockfield, who, um, so that is my, my um, um, industrial partner in this project, um, and they um, yeah, made this collaboration, pos this collaboration possible and also gave us um, very good um, feedback, basically. Um, so yeah, I would like to start with a quick uh, motivation why it uh, might be um, interesting to look at um, salt deformation from a seismic point of view. Um, yeah, as, you, as you know, salt is um, involved in um, a number of um, industrial applications. It's, um, for example, used for um, storage of nuclear waste. Um, it's also um, been used um, lately to, um, to s as an energy storage of um, compressed air, for example, in the um, subsurface. And um, another um, important um, yeah, property of salt is that it's often involved in forming um, hydrocarbon traps due to its very um, yeah, unique um, properties. So, and the um, idea of this project is that we, and in, in this, in this um, yeah, due to the uh, deformation in the flow, which might um, go on in these kind of um, um, settings. So I'll show you one um, um, sample um, schemat um, of salt dye up here um, on the bottom left. This might lead to a, s a certain um, lattice preferred orientation. Um, we got um, this idea actually picked up um, by um, studies which has been um, done on olivine and um, which has been also um, discussed um, before, for example, by by Lucan, and this um, if and if um, this uh, if the uh, single crystals are seismically anisotropic, and as um, halite is um, seismically anisotropic on the single crystal scale, then this um, would um, lead to effective seismic anisotropy on um, on scales which might be um, important for um, on on, s on for seismic wavelength, and um, if we do not account for for this effect properly, this might lead to wrong um, subsurface image. Um, so, um, with that in mind, I would like to uh, quickly, um, yeah, I just I talked about seismic anisotropy without really um, saying what it actually is. Um, yeah, well, I, I I imagine many of you I know that, and we also have been um, heard many talks about that. So, one um, phenomenon which we um, see in seismically anisotropic media is then when a when a shear wave is entering um, an anisotropic medium, it gets split in two different waves with two different um, polarization directions and um, velocities, which um, leads then to a time delay between the um, this pass and the slow wave, which give us um, first an estimate about the, um, the amount of seismic anisotropy, basically, and also gives us insights into the um, deformation history by measuring the, um, the polarization of the fast shear wave. And on the right side, I just show you um, a P-wave um, anisotropy surface um, calculated from um, the elasticity tensor of a single um, halide crystal. And you can see that the um, P-wave velocity varies um, depending on the um, polarization direction. So that is another effect which we see um, um, there. Um, so yeah, now I'd like to, yeah, we would um, first um, quickly give you actually like a further motivation by looking at a seismic data set we have um, where we from from the Gulf of Mexico we did measure quite clear um, seismic anisotropy then I would like to show you s um, a um, geo uh, mechanical deformation model we have been developed um, in, in Swansea at Rockfield um, to um, apply idea to our idea um, to, to link um, the deformation and the seismic anisotropy as I um, explained at the motivation, um, and then I um, show you very quickly something, um, some seismic modeling we did 
and based on the velocities we have calculated, then I will summarize everything in the end. So um, the mahogany salt body is, as I said, located in the um, Gulf of Mexico. So here you have an um, yeah, ge um, overview about the, well, basically the northern part of the um, um, Gulf of Mexico. And all this um, um, black stuff is um, salt. And you can see there's also um, like some, some, some faults. And the mahogany salt body is there um, indicated with this um, gray um, arrow on the right side. If you can um, um, see that, and yet, yeah, and the um, Gulf of Mexico is actually um, a quite yeah, yeah, extensively like studied um, area because like there was um, loads of um, oil and gas discoveries in the in the in the past. Um, just a very quick um, like closer view in the um, so you have an idea about the um, scale um, what we are talking about. Just a closer view of the uh, mahogany salt body. Um, we do have a um, VSP data set from there, which is, um, so it is a vertical seismic profile and data set. So that I show you the how this schematically looks like um, on the left side, where we do have um, like a borehole um, um, through the salt and the um, receivers are vertically aligned um, on top of each other inside the, um, inside the um, borehole and we have a um, source somewhere far away from the um, from the receivers and you can see that some of the um, receivers are inside the salt and some of them um, are below of the salt and then we look at the um, um, yeah sorry the the, um, the seismic response of the receivers on the on the right side that is the um, um, p2s conversion at the at the top of the salt and that is the P2S converted wave at the at the bottom of the salt, and as I said, we want to use um, um, shear wave splitting to um, measure the seismic anisotropy in these kind of um, inside there. So I just show you from from one um, receiver how this actually looks like. Um, he already at the in, the in the top panel rotated into so-called fast and slow direction, where we just have the where the um, waveforms are more or less just um, separated by a certain time delay, which is um, which gives us an estimate about the amount of seismic anisotropy, which is about like 20 milliseconds here. And um, on the on the um, right, you see um, the particle motion, which is um, for the un for the uncorrected phase in the top right, uh, which is basically just um, a plot of the components of motion against each other. And what we then um, do is um, are basically linearizing this particle motion, and which then basically mimics an isotropic um, case because the energy is just polarized in one direction. And we end up with um, having information about the splitting parameters, which is the, as I said, the time delay between the fast and the slow shear wave and the um, polarization of the um, uh, fast shear wave. Um, we do this um, for all of the um, receivers. So for all of the receivers we had, and we end up with something um, um, here. So on the on the x-axis, the, the I just show the um, the different um, receivers we had. So where one was in at the uh, like inside the salt, and um, 48 is already um, outside the salt, so it's at the bottom. And on the y-axis, you see the time delay between the fast and the slow. Um, shear wave, which is um, yeah, gives us an estimate about the amount of seismic anisotropy, and we can see that there is an um, yeah, increasing time delay with an ongoing travel time um, through the salt, which is basically a very clear sign um, of of seismic anisotropy. Um, so we had some problems with um, wave conversions from the um, salt to the um, to the yeah, shale layer beneath. For that reason, we um, had some very suspiciously high looking um, time delays which I um, uh, didn't didn't show here so from from receiver 11 to like uh, 13 to uh, 24 um, I said we then um, we, we did try to build a um, um, deformation model um, of the um, Gulf of Mexico or like not of the Gulf of Mexico, of the, of the mahogany salt body um, in the 
um, Gulf of Mexico, that is what I um, and did it my um, time in at Rockfield, and we did basically a very simple setup. So we didn't want to have like too much complexity inside the model. We didn't want to have like too much. Um, so and we did constrain the properties with quite typical um, Gulf of Mexico properties, which um, applies to um, now the rheology of the salt as well as the like a general and um, geometry as well as the um, compression rates, for example. Um, just to show you very quickly um, how it was in time. So in, in total we have um, like um, 5.8 um, million years of salt deformation. So you see this 2D model and it's quite, um, we, we kept it quite um, simple. Obviously you can um, put more um, complexity um, um, in it. So what, but yeah, what is, um, so yeah, the mahogany property is effectively like an advancing salt sheet. And we did um, pick up the geometry um, by um, a um, seismic um, restoration paper from uh, Mark Rowan. So I show you um, a picture of them on the right side there. What they did is basically they, they interpreted seismic um, horizons together with um, like geostrategic um, data to um, come up with an how the yeah, an idea how the mahogany salt body did evolve in time. And that is um, based here just in, in 2D um, along one um, seismic profile. And yeah, on the, on the left side again, our um, model. So in the very, very uh, bottom right, you see how the uh, mahogany, um, how they interpreted the, how the mahogany salt body looks um, right now. Um, as I said, we want to link um, the um, deformation inside these kind of settings with um, the possibility of seismic anisotropy um, occurring. For that reason, we, um, so to do that, we um, um, estimate strain along certain kind of path lines inside um, um, the model. So we applied this idea to the um, mahogany deformation model I just showed you, where the um, so here the, the red dots are just, um, you, you trace particles through the model in time and the red dots just show where they um, are at the very end. And the blue line just showed one uh, specific point which we have traced in time. And then we just um, calculate very um, um, straightforward the, the change of the velo um, um, deformation velocity in space direction um, shown on the on the right side there, where they, in our case, we don't have any, um, to the we, we just have a 2D case in our, um, in our um, sample. And um, we use this as an input in um, plasticity texture um, a modeling program. Um, um, in our case, we use um, um, VPSC, which has been already um, introduced um, by previous talks, for example, by Lucan. And um, so, and just just to remind you how um, this works, we basically try to predict the crystallographic texture. Um, in our case, of um, a polycrystalline halite. So we assume that um, all whole salt body is just um, consisting of halite. Um, when we when a certain kind of um, deformation has been applied, and so that example is not um, related to what I showed you before. It's just an example. Um, of at the bottom is um, just an um, the texture of a compression experiment have um, performed in Utrecht, where they have um, compressed um, a polar crystalline um, halite, and we had tried to um, like simulate this um, texture with um, VPSC um, shown at the top. Um, the important to mention is, as um, I pointed out already, um, this um, recrystallization is not considered in um, and VPSC, which will certainly have an um, um, effect on the uh, micro st um, um, structure. Um, ju just one example, uh, it's one more example of the how the um, of one um, example of how the uh, texture evolved for um, basically this um, blue line I just showed you a um, couple of slides ago, so along one certain um, path line um, here for a different kind of um, time steps from um, 1 million year to um, 5.8 um, 
5.8 million years um, for a certain um, um, set of input parameters we used for um, as a um, for the um, single um, crystalline um, properties of halite. And so we, we do this uh, stuff for all of the um, points, and I promise to um, say something about seismic anisotropy. So we yeah we come up in the end if we and do all that for all the and points with something like that where we um, calculated the um, based on the texture we have calculated the um, seismic um, anisotropy um, in on the, on the left side for um, the P waves and on the right side for S waves you're just giving as um, as a percentage and um, so that is again um, based on the geometry I showed you before on the uh, mahogany um, deformation model without the this this die up here also without this this source we have um, um, seen so what we can see is that um, like first we get quite high um, values of seismic anisotropy um, in P wave we end up with having values up to five percent and S waves up to um, ten percent and we also see that um, we do have quite high amount of um, deformation where well we do have a high amount of deformation we also have a high amount of seismic anisotropy um, we then um, went one step further and we tried to um, use this and the calculated um, velocities we had for some um, seismic modeling which I show you um, the results here um, again the, so the geometry should be familiar now with you so that is again based on the deformation uh, model I showed you before and the um, um, the gray stuff is just um, isotropic um, shale in our case and the um, and the black is the is, is the salt body um, where we um, inputted the the, the the seismic velocities um, as um, um, yeah, calculated with the plasticity models where we had the effective um, elastic um, and properties calculated with that and the um, and so the uh, we wanted to have something similar than what we had in our um, VSP data set for that reason we had um, we put the receivers at the um, uh, at the right side there with this um, where the um, green um, where the green line is so these are um, again 48 um, um, receivers which have similar so similar geometry than we had in the um, VSP data set so also the first 12 receivers are inside the salt and the rest is beneath and um, and what we then um, did is in a uh, next step we basically processed the um, synthetic data in a very similar or in the similar uh, way as we did for the um, VSP data set and we end up with um, so we again calculated um, shear splitting results and um, try to um, estimate the time delay between the fast and the slow shear wave which we measure between of the um, seismic anisotropy and we um, end up with um, quite a nice match um, between um, the delay times especially at the receivers which are um, below below the salt which should just give us the most stable results Obviously, this doesn't mean that the anisotropy we see in the mahogany salt body needs to d be due to um, crystal alignment, but um, our synthetics um, match with that quite well. So, um, what I've talked um, about today, I first um, showed a um, yeah a new idea, a new workflow to to link deformation with um, um, seismic anisotropy, and we applied this to um one um, specific um, salt deformation model we do we do see that we have quite a high um, influence on um, seismic on seismic waves which um, about five percent in, in P waves and ten percent in s waves which, which would certainly be enough to um, significantly distort um, seismic images in the um, subsurface and we also see that our synthetics um, matched quite nicely with um, what we see in the VSP data set and um, yeah and also we had um, showed you at the very beginning of the talk um, um, that the uh, mahogany salt body we, we measure quite clear seismic anisotropy inside the mahogany um, salt body so um, yeah basically to conclude um, everything I think it's not um, um, 
yeah, and of often in, in seismic processing, salt has been considered to just be um, isotropic, and they clearly think that is not the case. And um, um, yeah, I hope with something like that, we can like push it a little bit more in that direction that we can um, investigate further um, along those lines. So yeah, thank you very much for your attention.